Hey guys, I'm Mike and welcome to the Lions Lounge, where today we're going to be sampling some wines. But not just any wines. These are from the manga series Drops of God. If you've never read or even heard of this series, it ran between 2004 to 2014, with a final arc that's been going since 2015. In Drops of God, you follow Shizuku Kanzaki, an employee at a beer company and son of the legendary wine critic Yutaka Kanzaki, who passes away at the start of the series, leaving behind a vast collection of rare and extremely coveted wines valued at 2 billion yen, or roughly 20 million USD. However, the recipient of Yutaka's inheritance isn't necessarily Shizuku. Rather, it's revealed that prior to his death, Yutaka had adopted a second son, the up-and-coming wine critic Issei Tomine, and that instead of choosing to split the collection between the two of them, Yutaka devised a competition in which they would attempt to find 13 wines, 12 of which were dubbed the Twelve Apostles, and the 13th, the fabled Drops of God. Whoever is able to decipher the clues left by Yutaka and identify the most wines wins the collection. So basically the whole series is a giant competition, with Shizuku and Issei encountering other wine lovers along the way. And for a series about wine, you can expect a lot of real world bottles to be displayed and tasted. It's actually because of this manga series that the wines featured in it saw a spike in popularity, as did the wine industry as a whole. And in case you're wondering, none of these wines of the Twelve Apostles or the Drops of God. Those are super expensive, like thousands of dollars expensive and very difficult to acquire. But these wines are relatively affordable and were pretty easy to get. And I did that not just for my sake, but for yours as well, in case you wanted to try them out after this. I'm also recording this on a Friday night, which is a little unusual for me. Typically when I record my videos, I do it on Sunday nights, and then I spend the next few days editing. But in this case, because I knew I was gonna be opening three wines, I wanted to take the next day to relax, because there's no way I'm going to open these wines and not drink a fair amount of them. And if you've been following my channel for a while, or if you know me, you probably think, Mike, can't you just share this wine with loved ones, possibly your wife? If my wife drank as much as I did, don't you think I would have made more of a dent into this f***ing mountain behind me? Anywho! Without any further ado, let's get started. And just so you know, I am definitely going to be butchering all of these wines' names. Sure, I could have Googled how to pronounce these names right, but I probably would have screwed it up anyway, so why bother? So, this first wine is the Louis Jadot Shopless, seen in Volume 3. In this part of the story, Shizuku and his friend Miyabi are secretly helping a failing Italian restaurant impress Issei, who had previously given it a scathing review on its wine pairings, which caused it to lose its standing in the industry. The Shopless was chosen to pair with one of the starting dishes, and is described as tasting like mineral water with a twist. So, let's get this bottle open. So I'm not a pro at wine tasting, but I do have some experience. So normally you first smell it. For one, to open up your palate, and the other is to kind of prepare yourself because when you're smelling it, you're identifying some flavors in your mind. It's kind of just getting you ready for the first taste. So yeah, I smell grapes. It smells kind of like a grapey mineral water. Let's go to taste. Yeah, I can, I can see what they're saying. It does taste like mineral water. Ooh, that's interesting. So then at the tail end, you kind of get some some fruitiness, obviously from the grapes, but it's it's cool, yeah, that, with the twist, that I see it. Yeah, initially there's not really much to it, but it's kind of, as it goes down, you start to, it kind of starts to open up and you taste a lot more coming from it. This is pretty good and super easy to drink. I can totally see why this would pair with the starting dish in the manga. Okay, next up we have the Saint Cosme Cotes du Rhone. This one was featured in volume four during a competition between Shizuku and his coworker Honma, who only cared about Italian wines in a France versus Italy wine tasting competition. The Saint Cosme was the first wine that Shizuku pitched and while it ultimately lost out, it's very easy to obtain and is said to be spicy and feisty. So let's see if that's true. So this is supposed to be a table wine, which means you don't have to decant it, but I am gonna give it a gentle stir in the glass. So here we have the Cotes de Rhone. What does it smell like? Well, let's give it a try. Hmm. I kind of get some oakiness from it, sort of like what I expect from like a bourbon. So I'm wondering if this is like aged in some kind of barrel, some chocolatey notes, I think. Obviously mixed with the grapes, but it smells really good. All right, let's give it a taste. Ooh, yeah, this is nice going down. I don't really get that oakiness. Oh wait, no, there it is at the end. Yeah, like the previous wine, this one, ooh. So, 
There is definitely a lot of flavors going on here, some of which I can't identify. I do get some very strong and bitter fruits, but then at the very tail end when you drink it, you kind of get that oakiness that I was talking about. It's, it's very interesting. Just kind of swishing it around in between each drink does open it up a little bit more, and it becomes, I feel, a little more palatable with each drink. Yeah, this is really good. I like this a lot. This last wine was the most difficult to find and the most expensive, and it's also the one I literally cannot pronounce. I think it's pronounced Pupile Castillon, but I could be completely butchering it. Regardless, this was seen in volume nine. This wine was left behind by a former coworker and friend of Shizuku's, who passed away suddenly before he had the chance to share it. And like many of the interesting descriptions of the wines and drops of God, this is supposed to taste like Jazz? This is also the only wine out of all of them that I apparently have to decant. At least in the manga, even though the wine was only a couple years old, they did tell them to decant it. And doing some research, you should apparently decant this anywhere between two to three hours. So that's what I did before I started this video. So if you were wondering what is in this glass, it's this wine that has been decanting for the past three hours. All right, let's see how it is. Definitely a little darker than the previous wine. This one smells a lot more full-bodied. It's hard to describe, but compared to the previous one, this is just, this just has a lot more depth, at least on the smell anyway. There's something there, I can't really put my finger on it, but let's give it a taste. Ooh, I like this wine a lot. Okay, the previous wine was good, but I feel it was a little rough. This on the other hand, it's definitely strong, but there's just something about it. I don't know about jazz. I don't I don't picture jazz when I drink this. I just get like earthiness, you know? That's kind of what I think of. I think of like, yeah, like on my tongue, I taste like earthy notes. And it's not bad either. It's really good. Ooh, man. And then there's like a like a punch of fruit that comes at you. So it's like earthiness and then some fruit. This is delicious, I like this wine a lot. So if you're wondering about price and availability, I was able to get each of these wines for under $45. The most expensive one being the Pupali Castillon. This was about $44 and there was only one liquor store in my area that had it, but other than that, not too difficult to get. The St. Cosma was, I believe, $13, and that one was available in a lot of liquor stores near me. And finally, the shop list, while not as easy to get as the St. Cosma, it was the second most expensive at around $22. So yeah, these are really affordable and pretty easy to get, so I'd highly recommend you try at least one of them. With my favorite honestly being this Pupali, it's pretty great. So today we tried some wines from Drops of God. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, I'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. If you have any cocktails you'd like me to make, or really anything you'd like me to try from your favorite series, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see what I make outside this channel, follow me on Twitter at Mr. Space Lion or Instagram at Mr. Thank you so much for stopping by the Lion's Lounge. I'm Mike, and I hope to see you next time.